I turned my kitchen into the famous chicken chain, El Pollo Loco. And over the next three days, I cooked some of their most popular dishes to see how closely I could recreate them. With almost 500 locations, this Mexican-born chain has risen to fame due to their flame-grilled chicken and their family-friendly meals. So overall, I created five signature El Pollo Loco items. We have our flame grilled eight piece skin on marinated chicken, marinated white chicken breast, Spanish rice, serrano pinto beans, fresh crispy nachos with queso blanco, queso blanco chicken burrito, chicken protein bowl, double chicken avocado tostada salad, creamy mac and cheese, fresh made guacamole, creamy queso blanco, and our cilantro dressing. Now the first step of the process is grocery shopping. Luckily, a a lot of the groceries were produce, so that helped with the overall cost. Now something that sets apart their chicken is the amount of citrus and acidity that goes into their recipes. So I made sure to get a lot of tomatoes, oranges, and limes for marinades and different salsas. I also got extra ingredients such as a lot of onions, some fresh cilantro, and avocados. So as you guessed it, El Pollo Loco serves chicken. Now for El Pollo Loco's family meal, they usually just do legs and thighs, but I wanted a variety of different meat, so I went with a whole chicken so I could cut up the breasts, thighs, legs, and the wings. For all of my other recipes such as my burritos, my bowls, my nachos, I decided to go with chicken breast so I could cook that separately. So the total cost of groceries is just a little over $120. Now I was really curious since I was making this meal, I also wanted to know is it cheaper to make the meal myself, all of the El Pollo Loco signature items, or would it be cheaper to just go to the drive-thru and get it anyway? Once you factor in tax when you go through the drive-thru, it was probably off by five or $10. So it really is not that much different to order El Pollo Loco or to just buy the ingredients yourself. Once I got all the groceries, I put them away and then it was time to start cooking. So for my first dish, I wanted to do one of their most popular menu items, the family meal. What that consists of is grilled chicken with some sides, tortillas, and salsas. So like I said earlier, I really wanted to use a full variety of chicken in this family meal bucket. So I decided to use a whole chicken so I could get the white meat and the dark meat. Now this means that I'm going to have to completely deconstruct this chicken and break everything up into parts. So for eight pieces, I got two chicken breasts, two thighs, two legs, and two wings. Now I did some Google research and I was trying to find the ingredients that you use for this marinade and nothing would pop up. But I did see online that they marinate their chicken with citrus juice, herbs, and spices. That's why I got some oranges and lime. I thought this would ultimately go really well on a flame grill. So that's what I did. I squeezed some orange juice, some lime juice. I added salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, a little red cayenne pepper, chili powder, and some fresh oregano. I gave that all a really good mix and then I topped it off with just some cilantro. For my other chicken dishes such as burritos, bowls, nachos, they use boneless skinless chicken breast. So I actually got some separate chicken breasts that I seasoned almost identically to my flame grilled chicken and I put that in the fridge overnight as well. So when I do the family meal I'm gonna cook it over all charcoal grill just so it gets that really nice smoky grilled texture. When you order a family meal, it comes with three sides. So I created a Spanish rice, pinto beans, and mac and cheese. Now for the mac and cheese, I used a special ingredient called sodium citrate. What that is, is it kind of helps emulsify the sauce so it becomes so velvety, like Velveeta velvety. Something that I also do is I only hand grate my cheese, a little extra arm workout. I just was eating the sauce by the spoon. It was to die for. For the Spanish rice, I took a look and it was pretty simple, so I just wanted to get the sauce right. So I like to toast my rice a little bit beforehand, which I did here, and then I added some tomato sauce. I think the tomato sauce really kind of brings out a little extra almost sweetness to the rice. It's really delicious. Add a few seasonings like some paprika, a little pepper, some salt. I just had it plain because that's what the photo looked like. One of my favorite types of beans actually has to be pinto. I really like the mild flavor of them. I could not find serrano powder whatsoever, so I used just a hair of chili powder. Again, a little salt and pepper, but I thought the beans turned out really, really well. The pepper was tender and they weren't too spicy because I de-seeded them. So 
El Pollo Loco has many different delicious salsas, and I really wanted to recreate these because I feel as though it gives it the El Pollo Loco touch. So for the first salsa, I decided to do a green salsa or salsa verde. It has avocado, jalapeno, onion, cilantro, a little fresh lime juice, some salt. It's very simple, but it's really, really delicious. So I just put all the ingredients into a food processor, nothing needed to be cooked, and I just blended it on high. It came out really, really close to the original. El Pollo Loco has a lot of menu items that have a fresh pico de gallo or it comes on the side. So I wanted to make that as well with just some fresh onion, some fresh tomatoes, a little jalapeno and lime juice. Very simple, touch of salt, doesn't need a lot of flavoring. It just adds this kind of freshness and brightness to each dish because sometimes they can get a little heavy. most unique items that they have is this double chicken tostada salad. I have to admit that this salad is absolute flame. So I went online and I was scouring the internet on how to make these taco bowls, the ones shaped with the flour tortilla. And surprisingly, there was quite a few videos on it. So it was really easy for me to try to make it. I just ended up doing it on a pot upside down in the oven. Now I could have deep fried it. It would have been more consistent in color and it probably would have matched El Pollo Locos a little more. But to be honest, there was a lot of oil and so it was a little bit healthier. I'll be the first one to say I have very many times ordered this salad and it is really, really good. And it's definitely the dressing that makes it. Now, Personally, one of my favorite sauces that comes from El Pollo Loco is their cilantro ranch dressing. It's actually very simple. It's just mayonnaise, some milk, some cilantro, spices and herbs, but it just adds this really great creamy texture. It's great on their tostada salad, but I really like dipping my chicken in it, putting it over my rice and beans. So I definitely made a lot of this sauce because it was so delicious. So for the salad contents, again, it's pretty simple. You have your lettuce, actually a little bit of rice and beans, the chopped chicken, fresh pico, guacamole, sour cream, some dressings. I thought it was a win and it tasted just as delicious. If you want to go even healthier on the bowl game, then I created another bowl that they have, just the original El Pollo Loco bowl. It's really, really simple, just some rice, beans, fresh pico, fresh cut onion, some of that chopped chicken, and then you top it off with a little cilantro. Very simple. It's actually really, again, super delicious and flavorful. I think it's a perfect, perfect meal. Now, El Pollo Loco doesn't offer a ton of burrito options, but the one that they do offer is a queso blanco burrito. So I made their queso blanco with the sodium citrate, again, to get it really nice and velvety. I had a little tomato, a little jalapeno, and some seasonings, lots of salt. It was absolutely delicious. It tasted nearly identical to theirs. Now for the burrito, it's pretty simple. They just use a tortilla with the fresh rice and pinto beans. They add chopped chicken, guacamole, some queso blanco, and some fresh salsa. This one looked so much like the advertisement. I was really excited when I created it. So after looking online at their menu item photos, I realized that they didn't have the chip that I wanted. So I decided I'm gonna be picky and we're just gonna make these homemade ourselves. So we're gonna flash fry them and they're gonna be so much more crispy. And then we're gonna add all of the salt. We can choose how salty we want them. They'll be nice and warm. And it was just the perfect way to create a nacho. So for my nachos, I used my homemade tortilla chips, smothered that with all of that delicious queso blanco, added some beans. I wanted to add the chicken, top it off with a little guacamole. Very simple, but absolutely delicious. I'm a huge nacho fan. I actually always order nachos wherever I go. So it was the perfect kind of blend with those crispy chips that I made. So I had an amazing time creating this. It was definitely a lot of work, but I thought that the outcome was perfect. The presentation looks exactly like what you would find on their website. I absolutely adored it. If you wanna see me turn my kitchen into another restaurant, definitely comment below and let me know which one I should do next. So get ready and I hope to see you all soon.